Hello guys, how's it going? Today I'll be talking about Valkyria Chronicles 4, the fourth installment in the main Valkyria Chronicles series, not including the two spin-offs for mobile and handheld systems. It's the first Valkyria Chronicles game to release on the console since the original back in 2008 for the PS3. The second and third installments were developed for the PlayStation Portable or PSP, so I never really was interested in those games just by the nature of the medium, unfortunately. I wanted another console experience like Valkyria Chronicles, and now we finally got it. I remember playing the original Valkyria Chronicles, and at the time, I was itching to play any kind of Japanese role-playing game. The PS3 lacked any kind of game in this genre at its initial launch, and Valkyria Chronicles was truly the first game to fill those shoes of the great PS2 JRPG era. Developed and published by Sega, Valkyria Chronicles 4 is a military-themed tactical role-playing game set in the year 1935 on the fictionalized content of Europa. Two superpower countries fight for control of a precious mineral resource called Ragnite. Its uses range from powering military weapons such as tanks, being used for fuel and even medicine. When Ragnite starts to become scarce, the Empire launched an invasion on the Federation for control of the remaining resources. The game refers to this as the Second European War. Story Valkyria Chronicles 4 takes place at the same time as the original, so it's not exactly a direct sequel. You follow the story of a Federation Army Elite Ranger Corps squad, designated Squad E. The game is told through chapters in a storybook style where cutscenes, events, and battles are all highlighted on every page as if the story was being written down in a journal or history book. Interactions between characters are told with dialogue and talking heads, with some cutscenes sprinkled here and there. Valkyria Chronicles 4 starts with an introduction to the main protagonist, Captain Claude Wallace, a determined and focused commander who's poised to take on the Empire and end the bloodshed. This combined with his empathetic and caring emotion leads him to be a dynamic and strong-willed character. His squad mates, who also happen to be childhood friends, constantly test Claude's abilities as a captain as well as provide personal anecdotes of their past lives before the war. The strong connection between the characters in Squad E creates the sense that you are not just controlling grunts in an army, you're controlling people who have emotions and feelings towards each other, making you more attached to their personal struggles and aspirations for winning the war. Even the squad mates who are not main story characters are given dialogue and emotion. They're given their own backstories through squad stories, and you learn more about the character's past, not as a means of advancing the main story but to make even the most irrelevant characters more human and personal. Throughout the game, the characters are pushed to their limits both mentally and physically. Hard choices that characters need to make highlights one of the game's key themes. War is ugly, nobody truly wins with war, and it's something that every character is fighting to see for peace. Another interesting thing that Valkyrie Chronicles 4 does is highlight the perspective of the enemy. The Empire are portrayed as a Nazi-like regime with no morals or values, just mindlessly killing and causing destruction in their pursuit for the precious Ragnite resource. But you soon realize that the Empire does have some interesting characters in their ranks who are also fighting for their own personal reasons. You get to see the things driving the enemy forward and you almost understand why the enemy characters are doing what they are doing. They're still pretty bad, but they're not that bad. The game throws a couple of twists to keep the story interesting, and there are also chapters that serve to give players a glimpse of the past and see how things ended up the way they are. You discover why some characters do the things they do or feel the way they feel. The game does an excellent job of building every character's emotions and thoughts. The real story isn't the Grand European War, it's the characters and how they evolve and shape their own future. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is categorized as a military-themed tactical role-playing game. There are elements of JRPGs and elements of turn-based tactical strategy games. The story is played out in cutscenes that populate a storybook, and character interactions are done through talking heads. The meta gameplay happens on one of two screens, the tactical overhead map where you can select your characters, and the action phase where you can control these characters and move them around the map. Each character class has their own specific amount of action points or AP points. This resource is crucial to the strategy of the game. Characters only have so much AP points to move so players need to plan their movements wisely. Another resource in the game is called CP points. This is how many times you can take an action per turn. 
Once these are all used up, the player turn ends and the enemy turn begins. Alternatively, you can save CB points by ending your turn early and using them on the next turn if this is part of your strategy. To add even more layers to this game are the classes that you can use in battle. There are a total of 6 classes, each with their unique set of skills and equipment to turn the tide of battle. The Scout class, who can use their AP points to quickly cover ground in a game. They are the most effective class in the game in my opinion because of their versatility and all around usefulness on the battlefield. They carry a single fire rifle that's accurate and effective on enemies as well as grenades to eliminate enemies in cover. The Shock Trooper class is essentially the anti-personnel class. They excel at eliminating enemy troops at close range but lack the movement and range of the scout. The Lancer class is the anti-tank class. They are heavy and extremely resistant to explosive damage. Their role in Valkyria Chronicles 4 has been expanded to be used in key specific missions, so now they're more than just tank killers, which is a good thing. The Engineer class is your support class, supplying ammo to friendlies, repairing tanks, removing mines, and repairing sandbag fortifications. Repairs and supplying ammo will be what you'll be using the Engineer for mostly, but they are absolutely crucial in some missions. The Sniper class is exactly that. They are extremely good at long range to pick off unsuspecting enemies caught out of position. I found the Sniper class extremely useful in almost every mission and one of the most satisfying to use, especially when you get that headshot. New to Valkyrie Chronicles 4 is the Grenadier class. This class can be both effective at grunts or tanks depending on what type of weapon you equip. They're almost unfair in some cases because of their range. A well-placed grenadier paired with an engineer to resupply ammo can wreak havoc. As you play through the game, each mission gets progressively harder and trickier to complete. The different ways the game throws victory conditions at you keeps you on your toes. Every mission has its difficult moments and that's where the challenge is. You go into a mission with little information on enemy positions, so it's a guess the game at the beginning. When you complete missions, you're given a rank from A to D, and it's so satisfying to get that A rank the first try. Ideally, you want to be the best rank to get the most experience points, which are used to level up each class, and DC points which are used to upgrade equipment such as rifles, grenades, suits, and tank parts. You can also replay missions and farm experience points, but I didn't find this necessary to complete the game. No other game right now that I can think of provides the same kind of experience that Valkyria Chronicles 4 gives players. It's a unique strategy game that's deep in tactical gameplay elements and approaches the genre with familiar RPG elements. Presentation One of the most unique things of Valkyria Chronicles is its art direction and sound. I played the PC remaster of the original Valkyria Chronicles and although it's 10 years old now, it still holds the same charm. I'm 100% sure Valkyria Chronicles 4 will be exactly the same. The hand-drawn art style gives this game so much character and charm. It's a joy just watching this game. The graphics are not particularly groundbreaking, but that doesn't matter. The game looks and feels like you're playing a living, moving storybook. One minor thing I disliked is the overuse of talking heads for dialogue and character interaction. I just wish to use more cutscenes in the game rather than talking heads. I found that this was used just a little too often. I would have much preferred full on cutscenes over talking heads. I can only take so much talking heads before it gets a little boring. The music is catchy and memorable, the game pairs certain songs with certain moods or situations so you almost know what the next scene or conversation will be about as soon as the music starts. The battle music gets you fired up while the calm piano segments bring the players closer to the emotions of the characters. Um. <laughs> True. You really have to watch out for Raz. I don't know. Claude gets kind of crazy sometimes too. Though you'd never guess it by looking at him. Replayability. Once you beat the game, a lot of things open up for the player to tackle in terms of new skirmishes and new characters. There's enough reason to go back and play the story with all your upgraded characters and the level cap increases from 20 to 30. If you haven't A ranked all the missions, now is a good time to do it. The game begs perfectionists to complete it. 
The very nature of missions allows you to play it very differently every time. Even though you've A-ranked a mission, why not tackle it with a different set of characters? Or take a different route in a mission that had branching paths? There's enough content here to keep players busy for a long time. The final thoughts on the game are very positive. It's more or less what I've expected out of a Valkyrie Chronicles game, which is a very good thing. We need more games like this. Games that are not just first person shooters or battle royale games. No loot boxes or battle passes. This is a video game that you buy and you don't have to worry about missing content or extra features. There are some things I had issue with. The game can definitely drag on at certain points. The use of talking heads almost struggles to keep my attention sometimes, but it's a small personal gripe. There were also some missions that were difficult not because they were hard, but because they were unfair. There was a mission where the enemy starts first and they immediately move to kill one of my tanks without me being able to do anything about it. It wasn't fair and it was just ridiculous to have that in the game. Here's my verdict. Despite the minor annoyances, I still think Valkyria Chronicles 4 is an excellent game that gamers should at least pick up and try, especially if you're a fan of RPGs, strategy games, or turn-based games. It's a beautiful game with fantastic art direction and charm that very few games have these days. It doesn't have ray tracing or crazy special effects, but it doesn't need that. The game will still be beautiful 10 years from now. The original Valkyrie Chronicles still is beautiful, and this game will be too. If I were to give this game a score, it would be a 9 out of 10. Go out and buy it already. I hope you like this video, leave a comment, and let me know your thoughts on Valkyrie Chronicles 4. Hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Take it easy my friends.